Welcome everyone, I'm Kev O'Pally, so Bradley's Offsider, and welcome to the Underground Racing Series. This is Group 2, Race 1, around Dutchy Estate, and it's brought to you by Level Valor. Um, we need to thank BL13 for uh, recording this race for us while we watched the other race in Group 1, which was a awesome race to be involved with and watching, so we'll see how the guys go in this race. Today we have PO Auto Ceramic Speed, Restart Racing, Team Italy, Mutant, Castelli powered by Elite, Fusion ECT and NZ Bro Racing today. Um, it's a short punchy wee course so we've got three kilometers and we're doing three laps of this one so we'll be switching between riders and seeing how they go. Group 1 ended up with a breakaway win, so it'll be interesting to see whether we can get a breakaway in Group 2 as well. Today we're a few riders short, uh, just with unavailabilities, so Team Italy has Juan Cruz Araldi and Max Milano representing them today. We have Restart Racing and on screen we actually have Daniel Jamroskic. He's a very experienced swifter. If you have raced in the uh, top of the A grade leagues you'll know him quite well. Adrian Vuliak, JP Electric and Piak Minard. You have to excuse my pronunciation, I'm so sure I'm miles off on these. Uh, Team Newton is Andrew Bunn, Greg Herbert, Remco Beckers, Chris Kaufman, Tom Obdam, and Greg Frieson. Um, in PO Auto Ceramic Speed, we have Bjorn Andresen and Jochen Lisson. NZ Bro, we have Thomas Williams, Aaron Balikli, Ben Root, Josh Haggerty, and Kajil Goodell. Uh, Castella, PB Elite, we have Francesco Visconti, Luca Zonasca, and Ricardo Panizia. And Fusion ECT, we have Nicolas Becker, Johan Randrop Kidring, Mads Flashberg, Matthias Lisson, and Andres Bang. So, yeah, quite a few different names there and um, back to the racing on screen guys we've got Daniel on screen here and it looks like we're all all nicely bunched up together here so no one really putting in any huge attacks as yet if you don't know this sort of racing it's open to any teams in the top 50 on Zwift Power so you get a hold of Cy Bradley or you can get a hold of me through NZ Bro and look up the About Us and there's an email address in there to get a hold of us. And the numbers are really short, so the groups are between 24 and 40 and the reason for doing that is so we can create breakaways, have a bit of exciting, exciting racing to follow and not get affected too much by the blob speed, so it does make for some very exciting racing. And as you've seen in the first series, a lot of those races were won on breakaways or solo breaks. So it is a team race, so it is up to people to attack and other teams to sit in and, and force other teams to attack. And with a small field, uh, that's why breakaways are sticking. There's not a huge amount of, of climbs in these courses. Uh, there's a couple of 5-6% or ones as we just approached one of those hills now and it's quite a hard course to break away with and with riders with this sort of strength it's going to be very hard for a breakaway to get away. And we've got a couple of riders pushing off the front here which is great to see. Mad's really pushing the pace here, which is which is good. Nicolas Becker from Fusion, he's actually an ex-footballer. 
before he um, came into the Zwift land. I believe it was an injury to a knee, possibly knee or ankle, that forced him into Zwift racing. And here's another wet, punchy wee climb. And this is the, probably the place, each lap, that teams will possibly look to push a wee bit on and try and cause some sort of a split. Daniel pushing really hard again and as I've said before pretty experienced guy knows when to go pushing pushing really well here to get onto Andrew's wheel and Pierre it looks as though he's he's going well here for for restart so we've got Daniel off the front here with Andrew and I think that is Kajil as well from NZ Bro. And still pushing some pretty big numbers here. So Daniel is still pushing in the sevens, sixes and fives. I've got a wee bit of a gap here back to the main group, two to three seconds. Um, as we're heading into the downhill, I think for a break to stick on this course, you're possibly needing five or six riders really to, to negate the speed of that bigger group coming from behind, especially in the downhills. Uh, but these guys will push pretty hard, hopefully, and they'll make that bunch work behind them. And this is where the team tactics come into, and we've, we've almost got a rider from each group here, so it'll be interesting to see whether the group does chase hard across here, or they leave them to go, and as I say that, we've got two riders pushing to try and get across, and you can see a big long snake in behind there, so it looks like the, the group isn't going to let anyone go at this early stage. So back in there all together as we hit the wee, wee bit of downhill for a bit of recovery for everyone. And the elite races are pretty much like the normal races, the B's, C's and the D's. Uh, the only difference is they're pushing way more power than everyone else. So the same strategies will work in, in your B grades, C grades and your D grade racing. Because they're racing guys of similar abilities. So it would be no different if we were watching a B race or a C race or a D race. It would all end up very similar with those smaller fields. And it does make for some very exciting racing and possibly in the future looking at um, putting in those B grades, C and D grades for a bit more fun for everyone else to join in. And Andrew's going to have to push pretty hard here if he's going to latch on to this group. And I think Andrew's just given up. He's not pushing the power that he was before and possibly knows that he's not going to make it across here. So. Unfortunately for Andrew, he's he's lost off the back there. So mutant down one rider in the in the group. Now they have six riders as a max per team, and the top five riders will be scoring points. And it's pretty important that those guys um, continue to race, and because you never know, there's always the uh, the virtual puncher that you can get with the dropouts or the technology. A few guys lucky enough to get the feather here, which will certainly help on the wee pinch. And we've got someone pushing quite hard off the front. And no one really going going after him here. And we've got Jock and Listen for PO Auto here. And it's a strange place to break away. Um, unless you're in a group here, uh, you're pushing up to a downhill segment and one rider against many is, is never something that's possibly gonna work. So it'll be interesting to see if he keeps pushing as we go up around the corner here. I'd imagine he'll relax a wee bit. Okay, still pushing some good numbers here. And you 
can see there he's pushing fours and fives and the groups are pushing three and, and probably going to catch up quite quickly as we hit the steeper part of this downhill section. Joe Kahn is actually a, um, he's an elite A rider in Denmark. He is a 5.5 20 minutes, so he's certainly got the goods for this sort of a breakaway. Um, I think it's just a matter of timing that break up, breakaway. So he's a consistent guy that finishes on the podium. And I think if you look at his with power, probably every second or third day he's on the podium. So certainly a guy to watch if you do race against him. And we've got Juan on, on screen here from Team Italy. And he's just cruising there, 143 watts. He's pushing a wee bit more power now. Nice low heart rate there, around 139, so he's certainly not in the box by any means. You guys look to have the, the measure of each other at the moment. Most of the guys, for example, in these, these groups are pushing that 4.7, 4.8, 20 minutes, to give you an idea of, of what this group is capable of. As we see a slide uphill there and a, and a strong push off the front here. And it does look like they're trying to stretch the bunch a wee bit here. All strung out single file. Mads has had a pretty good race, pretty consistent, always being near the front there. You notice a few riders in this probably don't even see the front, so very, very tactical type racing. Smart racing, knowing the course, knowing when to go and what wheel to follow. See if anyone attacks here and, and pushes on this way uphill rise. A couple pushing pretty hard and solid out the front there. And it's our man Daniel pushing again. Daniel can hold a solid 422 watts for 20 minutes, so certainly not a guy that you want to let get away in a breakaway with a few riders, and it looks like they've got a wee bit of a split here. And another one, Aaron Bleakley has got a cross there, and he's a pretty experienced guy. Nicknamed the PC Yoda. Anything technical you want to know, he's your man. Andreasen up there as well. So it's a good wee break we've got here. And we've got Listen in there as well. Listen's been pretty prominent in this race. We've certainly seen him pushing constantly. Riders here from Fusion. So Ben's pushing very hard across the top here. Ben recently did a uh, 437 watt 20 minutes. So if him and Daniel get away, I think the rest are going to be in a bit of trouble. Certainly two very strong riders. And it's Andreasen who's pushed across there. It doesn't look like they're actually going for a breakaway, these two, and the others are sort of just cruising in behind them, so this, this group will get together again. 
and seven riders is certainly enough to make a breakaway and stay away from that main bunch so very similar to group one race where six or seven riders got away and I think this is going to be the same where the, the major part of the group might sit in behind and let these guys fight it out unless there's a couple of keen ones back in the bunch and it looks like some orange numbers happening in the background there and some huge numbers coming in now so the guys I think are trying to push across and it's our man listen again is pushing and Frusen and Villiar are going as well and Nicholas Becker is is going to be one as well I think which might get in very close here but they might be running out of time I don't know whether they're gonna make it it's gonna be close But Daniel, Aaron and Ben pushing off the front here. And Fusion is not going to let that one slide. Closing that gap up very quickly. So these guys are going to have to keep the pressure on. They don't want to ease up and play silly games and let the group from behind catch. But it looks like they're still pushing good numbers here. Ben sitting on the 5.8, pushing up towards 6. Daniel going. Oh, great attack here from Listen. Jochen gone again. Great timing. Daniel's pushing through here. Ben Ruth on his wheel. Great use there, great use of the power up. And we've still got the bunch together here. And the main group almost onto them. And Almost double the size here, so the guy's really going to have to start pushing. And this is a good size bunch. Plenty of riders from Fusion here, so that's great for the team side of things. Obviously, the more riders you can get into this top group, the better couple of points extra for your first placings and second placings but then it's filtered down from your 32, 29, 28, 27 etc as you finish so it is important to get as many riders in that top 10 as possible and we can see the gap there you know it's a good good four or five seconds from this group and I don't think they're going to be able to push to get across a couple of guys stuck in the middle there and Everyone dropping a draft to try and get through there, but I don't think they'll have time to get across to that front group. Still four to five seconds. And we're possibly coming into the end, so hopefully we get a camera switch here and go to the front group. This is still the second chasing group with Kaufman. Menard in there. Thomas Williams. And looks like we're moving forward here to Beckers from Newton. Kaufman again. And pushing into the climb here. So this is where the second group would have to sprint if they're wanting to get close. And it looks like we've got a couple pushing pretty hard here. And we're across to the front group and we've got that one chaser in the middle there. I think he might just run out of time here. I don't think he's going to be able to, to get across here. And Fusion looking very strong on the front here. Got Greg right up the front there from Mutant.
and this will be interesting. We've got a few guys here that can push the 16 watts per kg. So some pretty impressive sprinters here. So it will come down to timing. And who's still feeling pretty good. And looks like someone dropped an arrow there. So was it an arrow? Greg pushing big numbers in that front group. This is the chase group here, going back to Becker's. And yeah, the second group I think have, have given up the ghost. And Aaron's dropped off. He's off the front group as well, so his job's done for the day. So listen in front of him pushing some good power. And hopefully we'll go to the front group here in a second so we can see what the front are doing. Here we go. And I think we're coming into the finish line here. Oh yeah, so we've got Daniel and Ben attacking out the front there. And Daniel pushing 6.7. And both on two seconds, so I'm not sure who's in the front here. Looks uh, so like ben, ben has gone to the front at 6.4. Five. Looks like Daniel and Ben are going to fight this one out as, as one, two, as we sit here in third. And we can just see the one and two battle going on in front here. And these two really need to push if they want to get across. And I think they've given up, they're not sprinting. I think one doesn't want to take the other one across. Um, so, unfortunately, these two guys are, are probably not going to catch up because Ben and Daniel aren't going to slow up here. And Daniel just hit zero watts there for a second, so I'm not sure if he'd a drop out there or not. Oh, probably a clever move. They're both, both pushing, and Ben's dropped it into 7.7, .7, so Ben's going for it here. Daniel's already gone and Daniel's pushing again. 7.8. So Daniel's pushing very hard. Ben's now put the hammer down. And hopefully we can move that camera to the front here so we can see what the, the two fighting and out are doing. We're staying very similar, so I don't think Bang and Andreessen are going to catch Ruth and Jim Roski. Jim Rosick, sorry Daniel. Pushing very similar watts, so these guys really have to put the hammer down if they do want to get across. And I think they were riding very similar to Ben and Daniel, so they're possibly not going to get there. Daniel in great position here on the wheel. A bit more of a draft. We pinch up and over. That corner's a really good one to watch and um, if you can get a wee bit of a slingshot and timing through there you can save a wee bit of energy and push through to the top here. So these two guys pushing solid numbers here. 500 plus watts. Hasn't been quite enough for Daniel to break, break the string to be in there. And listen going again. Pushing huge numbers here. He's got Haggerty on as well, so another good sprinter. So Ben and Daniel out the front there. Uh, they must be coming close to the finish line here because we've got Listen and Haggerty really forcing and pushing pretty close. And Ben, ben and Daniel pushing 10s, 9s as we're coming in 
to the last part of the sprint here. So hopefully the front and we have got Daniel chasing, but Ben looks as though he's made the break. And Ben looks like he's going to take this one from Daniel. And we have Haggerty in third, Listen in fourth, Freeson in fifth. And we've got a heap from Fusion coming in here. Um, and yeah, way, way too many for me to be able to read those out that fast. But um, great race. Fantastic guys. Rest of the main bunch coming through now. And that is the Underground Racing Series for Group 2 Race 1 Series 2. So if you're keen to get involved, make sure you get in touch with myself, Kevin, or Cy Bradley. And support Level Valo for making this series possible. Thank you.